Yo, what's up guys? James Carter TV here for my NFL Week 4 picks and predictions for the 2015 NFL season. Last week, we didn't do that great. We went 10-6, and that's not horrible, but it seems like everyone else did better than me. People had 13 wins, 14 wins on some occasions. I even saw one guy with 15 in the James Carter TV picks challenge. I need to do better I will do better. It upset me because some of the home upsets that I had happening last week, like the Ravens winning at home, the Titans winning at home, the Lions winning at home, they didn't come through for me. Even though in week two, that's what happened in abundance. As the Raiders won at home, the Jaguars won at home, the Buccaneers won on the, ro uh, on the road. So who knows what's going on in the NFL this season. I have to figure it out. I will figure it out. Let's begin now in week four. And we begin with the week uh, with the Thursday night football matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens. Ben Roethlisberger is out for this game with an injury, a knee injury, MCL sprain. He will return, we don't know, four to six weeks. For now, Michael Vick takes the throne, takes the reins, and he will bring this ship a crashing. Now, they're going to win maybe a game, maybe two during this Michael Vick stretch. But Michael Vick is not a good quarterback at this juncture. In fact, he was never really that good to begin with. And we're talking about back in 2003. So how is he now going to be able to do something? Actually, his best year was 2010. Okay, I'll give you that. Okay, he was good in 2010. Uh, but besides that, I mean, he hasn't been anywhere nearly as good since. They wanted him. The New York Jets wanted him, begged him to be decent in 2013. He couldn't even do that. Or 2012, actually, I believe. And then 2013, he went to Chip Kelly and the Philadelphia Eagles. He couldn't play. Um, actually, he was with the New York Jets. That's where he was. He was New York Jets in 2014, not 2012. Sorry. Uh, but still, he's not a good quarterback. I, it barely, he's even on an NFL roster. I thought he was going to have to sit out this year. But no, he's playing, and he's not going to do very good. And I can't trust him to beat this Baltimore Ravens, uh, Baltimore Ravens team. Yes, they're 0-3. Each one of their losses have come very closely. A throw or two away from being 3-0, really. If Joe Flacco would have connected in the end zone, they would have beat the Denver Broncos. If he were able to move the field, move the ball down the field, they would have beat the Oakland Raiders. Uh, actually, well, hell, if the defense would have been able to stop the Oakland Raiders, they would have beat the Oakland Raiders. And another drive away from beating the Cincinnati Bengals. They've been close. They'll continue to be close, and I think they'll win this one on the road to save their season. If not, their season is over. Forget about them. All right, next game, we have the New York Jets at the Miami Dolphins in London. And this is very unfortunate for the Miami Dolphins. I never understand why teams give up home games just to go to London. I don't understand it. And I really don't understand it now. As when, if the Dolphins ever needed a home game, it is this game. And actually, who cares? Because even in their home opener last week, they got blown out. They weren't even close. And we need to start thinking and believing that, my, that the Miami Dolphins are not a very good football team in 2015. I mean, remember, they won week one against a bad Washington Redskins team. They And they barely won that game. They one off a punt return for a touchdown. The other two games, they lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then the other game, they lost to the Buffalo Bills bad. So maybe the Dolphins just aren't very good. And we need to start thinking about that. Have the New York Jets going to London and winning. All right, we have the Houston Texans at the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, the Houston Texans, I continue to believe, aren't a very good team, but they are getting back Aaron Foster, and he'll help them win some more games. And Texas fans should be abhorring and dreading this because the only way you're going to be able to win a Super Bowl in the, within the next decade is if you find a quarterback. So the more wins you win this year, the farther you're going to be able to get Jared Goff. All right, And that's where your mindset needs to be, honestly. So... Uh, with that said, I have the Falcons winning this game. They're just a better team. They're going to start 5-0. I have them making the playoffs. They're going to make the playoffs. Yay me. All right, next game, we have the New York Giants at the Buffalo Bills. 
The Buffalo Bills is a team that I underestimated coming into the season just because I didn't know what to expect from Tyrod Taylor. Sure, he looked good in the preseason. There's been plenty of people that look good in the preseason, a.k.a. look at Sam Bradford. Okay, yes, Tyrod Taylor looked good in the preseason. So did Sam Bradford. I wasn't going to trust Tyrod Taylor in the regular season. Now he's giving me a reason to. And with that said, they're hosting the New York Giants, who I do not think are a very good football team. Colin Cowherd gets my Dumbass of the Week award as he has the New York Jets number five in his herd hierarchy. That's one of the most ridiculous and preposterous, egregious things I've ever heard. They're one and two. They're going to be one and three. Sure, they have Odell Beckham Jr. They had him last year, and they went six and ten, and their defense is even worse. Their offensive line is even worse. This is not, go, 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 no. this is not a good football team in New York. The Giants are going to lose this one. We have the Oakland Raiders going to the Chicago Bears. The Bears... I, I can't believe it because they're they're a talented team. They still have Matt Forte, who's still running the ball well. Al Sean Jeffrey, Jay Cutler is still better than ten starting quarterbacks in the NFL today. They still have Pernell McPhee on the defense uh, uh, on the defensive front. They have Adrian Amos, a rookie who's playing well for them at the safety position. They have some nice pieces. But now, man, they look like they're headed for the number one pick. They look like they're going to be the worst in the NFL, despite what talent they have. And if I'm one of the quarterbacks in this upcoming draft class, I, I'm so happy. Yes, I get to go to the Chicago Bears where I can throw to Alshon Jeffrey, where I can hand it off to Matt Forte, where I have a Super Bowl participant in John Fox as my head coach. I have Adam Gase as my offensive coordinator. A rookie quarterback is going to get a really nice situation in Chicago. But they're going to be the worst team in the league this year, and the Raiders are going to go there, and they're going to win a game. Although the Bears will sneak up on teams from time to time, they're just going to be 3-13. and That's just what's going to happen. All right, next game, we have the Kansas City Chiefs at the Cincinnati Bengals. This is my first upset of the week, unless if you count that Baltimore Ravens game. Uh, the Chiefs are a team that I'm low on just because I think their schedule is too difficult. And I don't see how they can make the playoffs with that schedule. This is a game that they need to win, though. They're 1-2. Uh, only win coming off week one at Houston. They're going to be desperate for a win. I think the Bengals are a little too high, and I don't think they're that good. Uh, now you have the Chiefs coming in, who I just think have a better roster. I really do. And their quarterbacks are kind of on the same level. Um, I think the Chiefs are going to upset the Bengals here just because I think one team is going to really want this win more than the other. Next game, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Indianapolis Colts. Andrew Luck is boo-hoo. Why my uh, shoulder's been hurting. That's why I've been throwing interceptions. No, it's not. Have any of those throws that you've seen Andrew Luck make, or any of those interceptions, I should say, have any of those you looked at and you said, oh, that was intercepted because he did not do a good job or that ball was inaccurate or he did not have enough arm strength for that pass. You've never said that. You've looked at those throws and you've said, why did he throw that? His decision making is a problem, not his shoulder. Okay, but with that said, the Colts are going to win this football game. I still think the Jacksonville Jaguars are a six-win team at best. The Colts are still prepared to... I don't want to say win the AFC South yet because I'm not counting out my Titans. I'm sorry, I'm not. But the Colts look primed to at least be a 9-7 football team. And this is a win they're just going to get at home. All right, next game we have the Carolina Panthers at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, this is another upset of mine. Look, the Panthers are 3-0. and They beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. Who cares? They beat the Houston Texans. Who cares? And they beat the Luke McCown. New Orleans Saints, and they barely got away with that. So, now they're going on the road to a Tampa Bay Buccaneers team that has shown to be a little bit resilient. Yes, they had a horrible loss week one. They bounced back. They beat the Drew Brees New Orleans Saints. They challenged the Houston Texans. Now they're going to be at home. Jameis Winston is going to sneak up on you, and he's going to beat you, Cam. He's already a better thrower than you, and this is, I know I'm going to get in so much trouble for this. I already think Jameis Winston is a better thrower. Then Cam Newton, and we're going to see that in this game. Next game, we have the Philadelphia Eagles at the Washington Redskins. All right, now this is another upset for me. The Eagles have not shown enough to indicate that they're a good 
football team in 2015. Yes, they had a win last week. Sam Bradford completed 50% of his passes. 50%, 14 of 28. Okay, they ran the ball well, and that's the only reason why they competed. Now you're going to against a Washington Redskins team that is really good against the run with Pot Rose Terrence Knighton joining the mix. And they were pretty good against the run last year, too. The Redskins, in fact, beat you last year in December for forgetting that. Now, yes, that was with RG3. Now, Kirk Cousins, they've had a good 10 days to think about this game, to prepare for this game. The Eagles... I, I'm not picking them to win the NFC East. I, I, I'm I just, I, I'm not sold quite yet. If they win this one, though, I think they'll be tied for first, and then we can have a discussion. But I think the Redskins are going to give them hell, and they're going to win this game. And the NFC East divisional games are always close. They, they are. For some reason, they are. This was going to be close, too. All right, next game, we have the Cleveland Browns at the San Diego Chargers. Phillip Rivers had a bad loss last week. The Chargers do this every year. They always have a bad loss on the road. That's their move. That's what they do. Now they're back home. This is when they're going to start rifling off some wins. They expect the Chargers to get more and more into the playoff mix. And it starts with two straight wins. One of which is this game against the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns look like they're uh, on the brink of becoming a disaster. It's time to start Johnny Manziel. I, I know Josh McCown had an, a pretty good second half, but there's no excitement offensively unless if he's out there, and that is something you cannot understate. Uh, so with that said, I'm picking the San Diego Chargers, though. All right, with the St. Louis Rams at the Arizona Cardinals, that's the next game on the schedule. Carson Palmer's been proving me wrong, man. I mean, I had the Cardinals going 8-8. Eight eight. Yeah, this guy's a dumbass right here. Cardinals look like one of the best teams in the NFL as long as he's healthy. Larry Fitzgerald, I said he was old. I said he was washed up. Hey, he looks pretty freaking good right now. I don't know where they're coming from. I think Bruce Arians, I think he's just great. I think Bruce Arians is just great because I still don't see, outside of three players, four, Defensively for the Cardinals, I don't see where the talent is. You have Calias Campbell, you have Patrick Peterson, you have Tyron Matthew. Who else? I mean, I don't see anyone else on that defense that's really impressing me. Um, but despite that, they keep winning games. They keep playing well. Um, so I'm going to give them their props. I'm going to pick them to win this game and to keep their winning streak a rolling. Next game, we have the Minnesota Vikings at the Denver Broncos. I'm kind of surprised how many people are picking the Minnesota Vikings to win this game. I think people are still uh, drinking the Vikings juice, and they still might make the playoffs. I'm not going to discount that. But how are they going to move the ball on this Denver Broncos defense? Teddy Bridgewater, although I do believe he is a franchise quarterback, the guy is throwing for 149 passing yards per game. And now he's going up against this Broncos defense with Chris Harris Jr. in the secondary and Aqib Tlaib in that secondary and TJ Ward in that secondary. How is he going to get passing yards against this guy? I mean, these guys, you're expecting Charles Johnson or Mike Wallace to get open against Aqib Tlaib and Chris Harris Jr.? Good luck with that. The passing game will be non-existent. They're going to have to rely on Adrian Peterson, and he's not going to outscore this Broncos offense. All right, next game, we have the Green Bay Packers at the San Francisco 49ers, who have been looking horrible the past two weeks. But keep in mind, they look really good week one. So which team are we going to see? I think they're going to compete this game. Yes, Aaron Rodgers is looking great. Yes, the Packers are looking great. They've lost games before that they should have won. Let's not forget they lost in Buffalo last year. They've lost some other games in the past where you're like, really? They lost to that team? They lost to the Detroit Lions in a really bad loss last year, too. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if the 49ers won this game. I'm not going to pick it. It wouldn't surprise me. I'm picking the Packers to win, though, in San Francisco. We have the Dallas Cowboys at the New Orleans Saints. The New Orleans Saints, Drew Brees should be back healthy. If he is, I'm picking the New Orleans Saints. If he's not, I'm picking the Dallas Cowboys. Brandon Whedon showed that, yeah, okay, he's serviceable, and he might win a game. But if Drew Brees is healthy, give me Drew Brees as the Saints will start to compete. I think they'll still miss out on the playoffs now. I think they dug themselves too far a hole. But, hey, they could win this game at home, even though their home advantage hasn't been much of an advantage lately, losing six straight games at home. That's really ridiculous, but I'll pick the Saints. And then, finally, you have the Detroit Lions at the Seattle Seahawks. I, I, I just I can't believe the Lions are 0-3, but when you look at their schedule, it's been really tough, and it's going to start to ease up. In fact, they have a stretch coming up where they have four straight home games. In fact, let me really quick, let me pull up the schedule for the Detroit Lions. 
I think they've gotten off to a horrible start. I mean, I don't think that they have. But they could really start to rifle off some wins. When I was looking at this schedule earlier, I was like, hey, the Detroit Lions still have a little bit of fight in them. Why is my, oh, why is my internet going so slow right now? I don't know. Uh, bear with me. But anyway, I'm picking the Seattle Seahawks to win this game. They're at home. You can't trust Matthew Stafford to make good decisions against this secondary. Forget it. Uh, but with that said, now I have their schedule up. They're hosting the Cardinals next week. I'm not gonna pick them. I'm not gonna pick them to win that game, but it wouldn't surprise me if they upset. And then from there, we have some wins. They're hosting the Bears. They're hosting the Vikings. They're hosting the Chiefs. They go to the Packers. They're gonna lose. Okay. They're hosting the Raiders. Hosting the Eagles. Hosting the Packers, who they beat last year. Going to the Rams. Going to the Saints. Go hosting the 49ers and going to the Bears. There are some wins there. They could still go 500. Um, so this talk of them being another top five draft pick, no, there's they're still wins here. They got to fix the offensive line. They got to fix their issues on offense. If they do, if they start throwing to Golden Tate more, start throwing to CJ or Calvin Johnson more, uh, fix those predictability issues on offense, the Lions are still a 500 team. They're still going to be in the mix late in the year. They're going to start getting some wins, and we're all going to be like, hey, we kind of buried them a little bit too early except for this guy. So with that said, let's improve from week three. I believe we will. Hopefully we will in week four. And I'll be back on Saturday for a Saturday Q&A. And actually, I'll be back tonight for a recap of tonight's game. Of course, until next time, James Carter TV, I'm out. Peace.